Hello everyone. Welcome back to Shaper Sessions. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Very excited to be here tonight to talk to you about Shaper Labs. Hey everybody. Yeah. So um, what is Shaper Labs? We here at Shaper Tools saw a problem with digital design software. Um, and if you're a longtime woodworker but new digital design person, uh, you may understand what this problem is, and that's that it's really intimidating to get started. Um, you have to, to use Shaper Origin, you have to use digital cut files or templates to actually make the cuts with the tool. Uh, but for someone who's used to working from a sketch and then taking that sketch to the bandsaw or table saw and just ripping pieces out to size, that's not an intuitive workflow. Um, so what we did here was we tried to make a 2D digital design tool for craftspeople as simplified as possible so that you can take the sketches that you drew up in the shop and get them into the computer quickly um, anywhere. Also, uh, this tool works on your desktop through the browser. It also works on your phone or a tablet, like Jake will show you later. Uh, I'm working on my desktop right now. And you can get those templates, those digital designs in from your sketch, save them really quickly to Shaper Origin, and then you're gonna get cutting. Uh, we are in the spirit of this working from a sketch today. Uh, Jake, could you pull up the sketch that we're gonna be working from? Absolutely. This is something that I, yeah, awesome. Let's get that on the bench cam. This is something okay. that I drew up um, for a new member of the family. My girlfriend's got a new nephew and I thought what better way to get him started off on the right path than to build a small toolbox. Uh, you may notice that some of these shapes, especially the sides, are not really uh, shaper origin on tool CAD shapes. Uh, you can design a lot of things on tool, uh, rectangles, circles, you can draw with a line, but this is a combination of a couple of shapes. It's a rectangle and a triangle and a rounded top um, that you, it's gonna be pretty difficult to design that rounded top, especially on the tool. So you're gonna wanna use digital design software for that. And then we also had a request on the Shaper community forum this week on, so the on tool box joint uh, calculator is really great for making evenly spaced box joints, but what if I want to do something a little more expressive, a little more artistic? Uh, what that means is unevenly spaced. So the inspiration is like arts and crafts, green and green style cabinetry that we've been doing a lot here. Unevenly spaced uh, finger joints that I oversized a little bit so I could pillow the ends. Uh, and then the other thing that we're going to do at the end of the show is customize this toolbox with uh, with an engraving and some pocketing for letters so that I can go back and do an epoxy fill on that and make it uh, Hudson unique. His name's Hudson. So we're going to make it Hudson unique, engrave a saw and his name on there. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to work from the sketch and we're going to do it quickly and easily in Shaper Labs, uh, simply without too much complication. How's that sound, Jake? I love it. I'm excited. And I will be your hands over here on the tool. You'll drive the you'll drive the computer, I'll drive the machine. Sweet. Um so we've got Goose on the switchboard here. Goose, why don't you pull up my screen? For contrast to start, I want to show what you're gonna be working with or what the state of digital design was up until we released Shaper Labs. This is uh are we good on the screen, Jake? Yeah. Jake can see the screens and I, can I can't. So we've got Fusion, okay, great. We've got Fusion 360 pulled up here. This is an Autodesk product. And this is one that we use a lot at Shaper. A lot of the folks that work here are engineers. Uh, so they come from this 3D design background. And this is great if you wanna make something really complicated. But if you just want to make a rectangle with a triangle on top, you might think, oh, I'm gonna create that well, <laughs> what are any of these things? None of these look like a, a rectangle with a square on top. You might think box or cylinder. Uh, the, the operation that you're actually looking for in there is create sketch, but that's hidden in there. Um, 
a lot of different functions, a lot of power, but too much from going just from sketch to cut really quick. We do have, I'll hawk for a second here really quickly, our free export to origin plugin though for Fusion 360. So if you are a power Fusion 360 user, or if you wanna go on a deep dive into 3D modeling with Fusion 360, uh, fully supported by us. We're trying to keep it simpler today though. Um, this is three dimensional, we're working in 2D. So you might think 2D uh, vector graphics are really good for that. The two main products that are out there right now are Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, which is paid, and then uh, Inkscape, which is uh, open source tools. So that's free to use. Uh, both of them are great. But now that I've got Illustrator pulled up here, let's see what happens when I click a new file. I wanna make a new design. So let's do a new file. And the first thing that comes up is this page, which I was trained as an engineer and not a graphic designer or an illustrator. So I have no idea what I'm looking at here in Goose, who is a trained designer was kind of laughing at me earlier. He's like, you don't know what an artboard is, Russ? Well, no, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what an artboard is. Uh, and why are we measuring that in pixels by default and not inches? I wouldn't even know where to start there. And now we're at 18.972 inches. Why are we on an odd number? Um, off the bat, I'm not in a good place to start with Adobe Illustrator. Um, we have a lot of resources that will help you learn these tools. Again, if you want to take that deep dive into the, the more powerful stuff. But for contrast here, let's take a look at Shaper Labs. Um, a blank canvas. Simple, of, clean. Uh, perfectly Love spaced, it. yeah, grid that you can work off of. Uh, and we've got just a couple things that we can do off the bat here. We can make a shape uh, either by finding art, literally making a, uh, a basic shape like a square or a circle, or we can add text. Once we add one of those shapes, let me just add a default rectangle here. When we click on that shape, you can edit that shape either by editing the shape itself, which will take you back to this page where you can edit its dimensions. You can shape shift that shape, which we're gonna do later. You can duplicate or copy that shape. You can delete that shape. Um, and I'm going to delete this now so we don't get distracted. But those are the two things you can do. It can't be any simpler than that. You can make a shape with these tools, and then you can edit those shapes by moving them, stretching them, combining them, um, all different ways that you can work with those shapes. Over here, we've got the menu. And you can see we've got an undo button, which is new. That's great. Uh, you will see down here that this is experimental. It is pretty stable, uh, but this is a new tool, so we're constantly developing it. One of the things that's new as of December, uh, this tool was released in August of 2021, I think. Uh, so since then, we've released the undo function, which is really helpful. We'll use that later and a couple more things, but now you can undo. That's great. You can title your file here and save it, which will send that either as a download to your desktop or phone, or send it directly to Shaper Hub to sync with your origin. And then in this menu here, we've got a couple options. You can log in and out. You can clear your canvas, which is to wipe it entirely. You can learn about how to use it. December 2021 update, see what's new. Um, Help Center, interface navigation and controls. Um, I'm going to try to cover as much of this as I can today, uh, but if you ever want to really learn everything that there is to know about labs, and I'm pretty confident in saying you can learn everything there is to know about labs in an afternoon, um, as opposed to Fusion 360 or Illustrator, which you could spend a lifetime learning, uh, just go to the Help Center or learn more about the interface navigation and controls. We've got a couple preferences. Would you rather work in inches or millimeters? Toggle just like on Shaper Origin. Smart alignment, which we'll play with later, and then some feedback. So as I said, this is in development uh, and we want to hear from you. So you can submit feedback via email and that goes directly to our team who's developing this, or you can start a discussion in the community forum and we read all of those and love feedback, good or bad. Um, so that's that for an overview. Let's 
take another look at that sketch so that we see what we're building and then we'll go back and take that use that as context to look at the make shape feature here yeah so we're gonna focus on this front part right first right yeah we're gonna focus on one of those side panels first yeah exactly the uh where the handle attaches so if you look at that i sketched this out on the sketch that we're looking at uh we work with primary shapes in shaper labs so circles triangles or polygons uh, squares rectangles and so i broke this sketch down into its fundamental shapes you can see we've got a rectangle there four by five uh, i'm going to widen that a little bit extra to add the length for the pillowing we've got a triangle which is going to be five inches wide five and a quarter actually so we go all the way out to the end of those pillows and three and a half inches tall and then we're going to use some circles in there to round the top, which is the part that you explicitly couldn't do on tool with Shaper Origin, and then add a hole for the handle. Um, and it's really going to be easy peasy, I got to say. So I'm back on labs here on my screen. Um, let me know when you can see the screen in the studio there, Jake. Go for it. Okay. First place we're gonna start, we're making some shapes. Click on make shape. My base shape for this one, I'm gonna say is gonna be a rectangle. So I'm gonna pull that up and it's got two input fields here for W width and H height. I'm gonna uncouple those so that the aspect ratio is changeable so it doesn't try to, change, try to stay a square the whole time. And I'm gonna type in 5.25, actually, yeah, I'm going to do 5.25, which is the 5 inch width of the toolbox plus an eighth inch on either side for those pillows. And then we're going to do 4 inches tall. Finish edit. That's it. I can click away from that shape, and there it is. Um, note, now that we're here, I can click the shape again, go back to edit those sizes. If I wanted to change the height to 3 inches, I could do that. That's a linked again, so it'll stay locked in the same ratio. Um, I can do that. I could rotate it down here. I can pan that shape around, which is not super useful when there's only one shape, but when there's multiple shapes you want to move around, as we'll do later, that's going to be useful. Um, I can also pan around on the screen. Now that we've got something to look at, I can click and drag to select. We've got all different kinds of things that we're going to do here. But again, you can learn more about all of the nitty gritty in the help section. What I want to do now is I want to add that triangle to the top. So triangle, anything that's not a square or a circle, basically you can make with this polygon tool. Heck, you could even make a square with a polygon tool if you wanted to. We're going to go in here. The triangle has three sides. I'm going to uncouple these again. The width is 5.25 to match the rectangle. And I know from just sketching that that height, I want to be three and a half. Finish that. And now you see I'm moving this triangle around independently from the square. You might also notice these red lines popping up. Those are our smart alignment tools. And so that's going to snap this triangle either to the bottom edge, the center, or the top. And then it's the same width. So. It's not gonna to snap to the right or left, but here you can see it's snapping left to right, center, which is all three, and then right to left of the triangle to the square. So we've got that. If I go into this menu over here and turn that off, you don't get, if for some reason you don't want that alignment, you can turn that off and float freely. But I want that so that I can take this triangle and snap it right to the top of that rectangle. Now to round the top, I'm going to add a circle. And this is a little bit tricky, but we're going to see how this all comes together in a second with the shapeshifter tool. And what the shapeshifter tool does is it allows you to combine and subtract different shapes, uh, these primary shapes, to make more complicated shapes. This circle is one inch in diameter. I know my handle is three quarters of an inch, and I want a half inch around that 
So plus one inch in diameter, half inch on the radius. That's going to be 1.75 inches diameter. Great. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to center it, and I'm going to zoom way in. I'm zooming with the scroll wheel on my mouse, and I'm going to drag this centered so that it just intersects the edges of that triangle. And I'm going to make this really obvious, actually, by dragging it a little bit high. And we can see what the Shapeshifter tool does with this. And then I'll bring it into a more nuanced position and do it the right way or the clean way. So to select all these, I'm going to hold on the mouse button, drag all the way over. We've got an icon 3 up here at the top that says we've selected all three. If I click on that, I can select or deselect any part of that three, but I want to keep all three. And I'm going to go here to Shapeshifter. Now, what does Shapeshifter do? What Shapeshifter is, um, it's a tool that takes all of these shapes that you've got laid on top of each other, and it says, highlight the parts of that shape that you want to keep. So for example, I want to keep this part of the triangle. I want to keep this part of the square. And you can see how much overlap here there is. I want to keep this part of the circle. Now, this isn't very tastefully done because I've got so much overlap here that I've got kind of a corner left there. But we're going to do this just so that you can see the results. And there it is. Now, the handy thing about undo is that I can always go back. I'm going to take this. I'm going to zoom in real close. And I'm going to use the down arrow key on my keyboard to carefully bump that down so that we get tangent. And let's say that looks pretty good. That's very, very close for a, what's going to really be a five inch wide thing at the end of the day. That looks great once I've zoomed out. Now if I select all of these again, go into Shapeshifter, now I can select those three, make shape. Now what I'm missing here is my circle and I don't have for the handle and I don't have anything to align it to. So now that I know that that main circle that's rounding the top is where I want it to be, I'm going to undo again, make another circle. I want that to be 0.75 inches for the diameter. And I'm going to drag that right to the center there. Now when I make shape yet again, or shape shift yet again, I can select just these three, make that shape. And that looks pretty darn close to that side of the box that we're looking at, huh, Jake? Spot on, yeah. The only thing we're missing is, uh, is the box joint features, huh? Yes, which are we gonna do in another operation, right? We wanna make yeah, that a yeah, side yeah, yeah. cut. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But. What's cool about this is that uh, I can sketch all of this in one view. I'm going to save this out as, let's see, let's call this toolbox end. I'm going to save that to Shaper Hub. Um, and why don't we take a look on Origin? Oh, yeah. Uh, this should have popped up on, on your tool there over in Studio A. I'm in Studio B across the shop here. Um, but that should have popped up on your tool at this point. All right, let's take a look. Bingo, toolbox end. All right, not bad. Not so bad at all. we could, yeah. Um, what do you say we cut that out? I'll, how, yeah, how about I start cutting this out and you can keep going, going on those uh, box joints. All right, sweet. Sounds good. I'm just going to drop it right here You're on already, my grid. Uh, yeah, you're already gridded. Why don't I can't see you because I'm on this uh, lab screen. So feel free to narrate. Let me know when I should take off again. Yeah, a couple things I want to point out before I get going. Um, Labs basically exports everything as an online cut, but it is just as easy as changing that cut type. Oh, in this case, I need it to be in outside. 
and this wants to be an outside. So now my cut types are correct, but I just got to make sure that I do that before I get started. All right, back to you. Okay. I'll start. I'll start over here. Okay, sweet. Uh, Jake's gonna do his thing. He's already got it gridded. Uh, I think he's already got the right tool in the spindle. He's already Z touched. He just changed the cut type, so he's just gonna zip out that outside profile. Uh, while I continue to make the finger joints on this. So the request on our community forum was to make unevenly spaced box joints. And so let's take a look at how we could do that. Um, we want those box joints to be on the end. And to do that, I'm gonna go back so that we're working based off of our snappable shapes here that have not been shape shifted. Um, and I'm gonna add what I want those finger joints to look like just on this side here, just so that we have uh, what's going to be the end profile of this panel and the flat profile of this panel all in the same view. So let's go into make a rectangle. Um, let's see. So I want this to be width. I want to make sure that Jake has plenty of room to cut past the ends of his panels. So if these panels are a half inch thick, I want this to be 0.75 inches wide so that he has an eighth inch on either side for when he's using a quarter inch cutter. And I want the height of this one to be 0.5 inches. So let's do that. Finish edit. I'm gonna drag this down here uh, and then what I'm going to do, because I want this on both sides, I'm going to duplicate this and drag it. I've got to zoom in so I don't get a handle. Drag this right up to the top here. I want another one that's going to be 0.75 inches wide. And I want this one to be 0.75 inches tall also. Finish that. Drag that down here. Duplicate, move that up here. And then my last shape is going to be 0.75 inches wide by 1.5 inches tall. We'll drag that right here. Now, just for reference to help Jake out, because he's on the other side of the shop, I'm going to add some text so that we remember which finger is which. We've got A. I'm going to duplicate that and zoom in, move this down. This is where the snap really comes in handy. Finish that. That's right in there. Duplicate this. Bring it down here. So that's our A. And then I'm going to add some more text, like B. right here on the second set of fingers. Duplicate that again. Drag this. Whoop, not that. Drag this. There we go. Right up. There we go. That's nice and centered. So we've got our fingers A, B, A, B, A. Jake's going to remove the B so that this side has A, A, and A in it. And it's actually not going to go this far. What I'm going to do here is show you what this is going to look like once Jake sets it up in workstation. Um, let's get rid of... Hey, you're back. I'm back. I can hear you. Hey, hey. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to use... I just drew the rectangles for the finger joints. Sweet. Um, and I'm trying to separate those. So I'm going to get all of these, not this one. Move that. Got to deselect that. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's forget that. And then. We can, because we can always undo. I'm just going to delete these three. Come back. So these are our finger joints that I built based off of that first panel. Um, and just for reference, I want to show that this is basically what it's going to look like 
in origin. So a half inch wide panel by four inches tall. And this is going to be center. We're going to have all of this and it's going to be rotated. Here we go. It's going to be rotated 90 degrees. So this is what that's going to look like in the top, top down on workstation. How's that look for you, Jake? That looks great. What's uh, what's the overhang dimension? Eighth of an inch? Eighth of an inch Perfect. on either side. So you're uh, using a quarter inch cutter, right? Yeah, but I'm going to set my grid up to an eighth of an inch so I can place that nicely. There you go. And you are going to be cutting. I added some letters in here for reference. You're going to be cutting these B pockets out and leaving the A fingers. All right. Okay. I can do that. And I'm going to get rid of this reference rectangle so that you don't have one more thing to scroll over. I'm going to rename this toolbox fingers. I'm going to save that out to Shaper Hub again. And to be able to just control Z my way back to this master, uh, this like overall model that we've got. We've just got everything going on right here. So we can always come back to this for reference. That is cool. All right. So uh, let's see. I feel I miss Jake. So Goose, can you take me off of labs so that I can see what Jake's doing? I don't want to get a recursive screen. We had that going earlier and it was fun, but it gets a little crazy. All right. I have that side face that we just cut out and I'm going to chuck it up into my workstation now on its side instead of on the shelf. Nice. I see you've got a spoil board there. Bingo. Is that what that little piece of MDF is? We got all kinds of goodies. So it might be a little short, by the way, Jake, to use the second vertical reference pin. So when I did these earlier, I just referenced them off of one pin and the top. So yeah. That's exactly what you're doing. Yeah, it misses the second pin just barely, but I know this is nice and straight here. So I'm just pressing really firmly up against that and firmly mm -hmm. against that one pin. Alternatively, I could put mm -hmm. the angle fence in there, which is going to give me a a wider or a longer mm -hmm. face, but I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, that looks awesome. This is just for show, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Goose, what are you saying? To this me? is like cook. This is cooking show style. Is Goose saying something? I can't hear Goose. Yeah, something What's about giveaways going on over there. Giveaways. Giveaways below. Giveaways hit the giveaway. Hit the giveaway button below. We <laughs> did kind win. of a uh, a brief intro this week. So this is the new year. Um, we just did a huge holiday promo. So hopefully a lot of you who are watching are new Shaper Origin owners. Oh, I hope um, so. And so <laughs> what this is, in case you don't know what this is, we are in the middle of Shaper Sessions, uh, which is a live show that we do every other Thursday from the States. And we also do them from Germany occasionally as well, from our EU office, um, where we show you how to use the tool, tips and tricks, um, awesome stuff that we've been working on over here new products or software updates, cool projects from the community, cool projects that we make ourselves, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. And you can see all of the ones that we've recorded so far. There's 50. This is our 50th birthday of Shaper Sessions, or 50th episode. Um, all you can eat, as I, as I like to say, on sessions.shapertools.com. You can go there and see all of the episodes that we've recorded, um, more to be added for a very long time. We've got infinite things to talk about. And if you watch those, you'll notice that we do a short show, uh, there's something cool, and then it cuts out at the end. Well, if you're watching this live, what we do at the end of every show is a live Q&A. So please add your comments in the chat uh, we will read them and answer them live at the end of the show. Uh, we also do a giveaway. So today, if you're watching live, we're giving away some cool stuff. We're giving away a swag pack, I think, which is a, a hat, a shop banner, and some stickers. We're giving away a t-shirt, and we're giving away uh, our favorite accessory, the 8th inch collet. And to sign up 
for that giveaway, you are going to want to answer the poll that I believe ought to be showing up at the bottom of your screen. Did that cover it? I hope that covered it, Goose. Um, yeah, we're really excited yep. for everybody new and old who is watching. Um, yeah, Jake looks like he's changing the cut types here so that the tool doesn't try to select something that it ought not to be selecting. Yeah, while, while you were going, I, I just went through, I placed, I made my grid nice and easily. If we get that side cam just to see my setup here, my workstation cam. Boom, clamped up there, nice and flush at the top. I went ahead and gridded, made a grid off of this front face and this edge. And I'm snapping down to this edge and leaving a little bit of overhang. I really just care about this dimension. And as long as I'm centered, we should be good. <clears throat> so on my screen now, you can see, I'm cutting the inside of this and the inside of this, both B slots, correct? Mm-hmm, yep, exactly. Sweet. Uh, first things first, need to change those to a pocket. Just clear out that material. And what do you want that depth to be? You said you would need a eighth inch of a- Five eighths. All right, five eighths. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a half inch panel and then an eighth inch overhang. For those of you that have no idea what he's talking about when he says pillow top, <laughs> I'll show this off. It is the, uh, if you want to come down to the. Is that like carrot top? <laughs> it's this rounded box joint. So it protrudes an eighth of an inch and has this really nice rounded profile. Just gives the, gives the piece a lot of texture and a lot of like cool shadow dimensionality when it comes together. Mm -hmm. Very uh, arts and crafts feature. Yeah. Um, Hudson's parents are more mid-century people, but they'll deal with it. Yeah. It's cool. All right, I'm gonna get to ripping this. Um, I'm gonna cut both sides basically the same way. I'm just gonna make sure I'll cut this one. I'll flip end over end. Same, same scan, same grid. Just clear my cut history and do it again. I, I'll be test fitting along the way. And we're, we may be kind of ripping through this pretty quick, but if you're lost and don't know what's going on as far as gridding and using workstation, I I encourage you to go back into the on-demand sessions and check out the one check out one of the many uh, sessions when we do deep dives on Origin or on workstation, um, and get up to speed. Yeah, I'll try to narrate, but right. we've got a session for getting started. We got a session. For so Jake just turned the spindle on here and he's got the vacuum on, so he's ready to cut. Um, you cut by pressing the green button on the right handle of Origin. And what this pocketing cut type is, is it's gonna fill, it's gonna cut out that hatched area uh, that's in like a hatched gray. And when you get to the boundary of that pocketing area, which uh, has, a, has a clearance to the edge of your final cut, the self-correcting spindle of origin prevents you from going any farther past the boundary of the pocket. So uh, what that means is that you can really quickly and easily rough out the things that you uh, need to rough out without taking a lot of inside passes. What we're gonna do is just pocket them once and then take this inside cut. So now what origin and Jake are doing are they're following that line and as Jake drifts away from that line, the self-correcting spindle, which you can see at the bottom of the screen, is correcting in real time for him to stay on that line. And uh, that's how it works. So he's going to zip out this second finger joint pocket, and we'll do a little test fit, see how it worked. Uh, this is a zero offset cut, so a lot of times you need to add a little bit of clearance for glue, uh, for for wood movement, but when I did these before the show, they were just about perfect at zero. That feels That's what we call the squeaky fit. Yeah, that feels pretty good. A couple of types of a hammer, a mallet, that would come together nicely. Yeah, I like that. That's good enough for who it's for. 
There you go. <laughs> Which there is go. very good for people I love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm going to flip it. Sweet. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we've glossed over so many things in the session because we just can't cover it all every time. What Jake is using right now is the Shaper Workstation. Um, if you just got a Shaper Origin but don't have the Workstation yet, uh, what you, you doing? should get one soon because <laughs> it is, <laughs> what are you doing? It's the best way to hold things both flat and vertically for cutting with Shaper Origin. Uh, again, go into sessions. We've got tons of videos on how to make the best use of your workstation from creating custom fixtures to what all of the different alignment features our engineering team built in, what those all do. Um, it's You may see in the corner, it's clamped to an MFT table, uh, really cool integrations, things like that. But different topic for a different session. Going to go in here again, and quick as that, Jake's going to zip out these these remaining finger joints. So it's just using a nice back and forth motion here on the pocket. Um, different strokes for different folks. Um, I prefer to use a spiral on the pocket uh, rather than skiing across the hill and back. But uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to give that a try. Many different ways to achieve the same thing. Um, and we've We've got a couple of different primers on what the advantages of all those different methods are as well, again, on more Shaper sessions. So please go back and watch everything that you've missed. Um, it's all really good stuff. We've also got interviews with some cool woodworkers. We've got one coming up in two weeks with Ramon Valdez, who's a master of inlay and marquetry. Um, we've had chats with Philip Morley. We've had chats with, uh, oh man. What's his name? Uh, forget his blanking on his name of Fernve Woodworking out of Bend, Oregon. Some really great folks. We've had boat builders on. Um, Ramon's helped us develop a really cool process for marquetry using commercial veneers that we're really excited to show off that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks testing at HQ. So definitely if you're interested in marquetry or new processes, tune in for that one. Now that's a part. There you go. That is perfect. Custom box joints on the side of an odd shape. Thanks to Labs. Yeah. Yeah. Sketch to part in 30 minutes flat. Yeah. Easy. Easy peasy. Nice. All right. What do you say? Do we have time to do uh, some find art and think, some more text? I think we do. Um, we got the whole okay. side cool. of the box um, that we want mm -hmm. to that Russ wants to put some text and an image on. So this is a whole, yeah, one, whole canvas. Mm -hmm. One thing that we've done a lot with labs that we've shown off before is like sign making and personalization. So we wanted to break from that a little bit on this session to show the sketching capabilities, but also it's just so cool. Um, how could we not do a little bit of personal? Oh. Jake on the monitor? Yeah. Okay. Keep going, awesome. Russ. Great. Here we are. I'm back in labs. We're going to make a rectangle. And what this is going to do is uh, we're going to move this over to the side of our, our original diagram here. We're going to use this just to represent the side panel, and that's going to help us get everything all centered. So we're going to make that 12 inches wide and break that link 4 inches tall. Those are the dimensions of the panel. We can snap this over here, see how that all aligns. And temporarily, because you can always undo, I'm going to get rid of this for now. So we've got our new base rectangle for the side of the toolbox. Now, what I want to do with this is find a cool tool like a saw and add Hudson's name inside it. How do I find those things? find art. So if you missed it, all I did was click on find art. This is a library of millions of SVGs ready to go. You can see earlier today I was searching for tools. That's pretty generic and there's not a good place to put a name in any of those that I see, but I think a saw is probably a good one. Like a saw with a big empty area in the middle to add some more text. So let's see what we've got. We've got a miter saw, we've got some 
couple rip saws. Um, let's see, scrolling, scrolling. There was a dovetail saw on here that I saw a little while ago that I really liked. Let's see if I can find that. Just a plethora of tools. I wonder if I type in dovetail saw, if it'll come up. Was it the one? If not, we won't get earlier? mired in this. Yeah, I lost the saw I found earlier. Hmm. Oh well, it's gonna be okay. Let's do, let's do this one. And this will be cool because we can rotate it. So that's a little askance and it's a little small. Let's make that start with 10 inches wide. Let's see what happens. And then let's rotate that, let's say 30 degrees. Enough. 35? Five. Uh, that's a little awkward. Let's see if 45 will get the top even. Yeah, there we go. So let's do 40 just so it's Nicely askance. Nice. Good word. Askance. And I'm going to make this just a little smaller. I hear you saying something. Let me ask you this. What size is that rectangle you started off with? This is 12 by 4. 12. So you're okay. going to grid off of the inside of the finger joint there. Inside of the finger joint, I'm showing 11. Really? Ah, yes. Inside to inside. Interesting. Okay, well then that's a mistake in math on my part. So I should change <laughs> this box, which is very easy to do, so that I don't make something that's too big. Glad you double check that. So, let's see. Now we can move this around, and I'm gonna change this to be a little bit smaller. Let's try eight. There we go. I like that. And then let's add some text. I really like this National Parks font, but we've got a lot of different fonts here for you to choose from, from Braille to some handwriting oriented fonts, sans serif and serif for you typography nerds. Let's look at what handwriting looks like. So that's like a, that's a handwriting font right there. Um, here's an example of a serif, very uh, imperial. But I like this National Parks font, and that has a lot of rounds inside it, so it cuts really well with Origin. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. The other thing that you can do to make things change their size is just drag these corners here. So I'm going to take that, drag it to just right where I want it. Let's, uh, and this is actually an opportunity. I want to weight this a little bit farther down. So I'm going to turn off smart alignment because it's not snapping where I want it to, or it's snapping where I don't want it to, I should say. Click on that. I'm holding a little bit too long. There we go. Let's do that. I think I can make this a little bit bigger. This is an iterative process here. Drag that around a little bit more. There we go. Let's do that right there. I think that looks artfully centered. We got a nice saw. Um, this is going to look pretty good. I dig it. So. Jake, I'm thinking we talked about something different earlier because we had that cool dovetail saw that I just can't find anymore. But I'm thinking if we could do a single pass of an eighth inch or a 16th inch bit inside, these are probably gonna wanna be inside cuts, um, but inside these closed profiles, that would look pretty cool. What do you think? Do you want me and to- And then I'll fill that with resin after the show. You wanna use the eighth inch, not the- uh... Engraving bit? Well, um, we could use the engraving bit also. I so feel like you're just going to have to, yeah, we could. If you want to go all the way around this profile, it's just thinking that's pretty long. But we could do the engraving bit too. It's all good. 
let's do that. That's what we prepared. Um, different file, but it all works out. Hey, I can do it all. What have you got? I got an eighth inch over here. <laughs> uh, let's do the engraving bit. So I'm going to send this to you as toolbox engraving. Cool. And as we've done before, I'm just going to hit save to Shaper Hub. That goes to Shaper Hub on the web, and everything that's on your origin files in Shaper Hub on the web is also going to sync straight to your tool. Sweet. And that should be ready to go. All right. Just chucked up my engraving bit. And I'll start with the saw. Let's navigate back to Jake, Goose. Yeah, we're on me. By the way, I think if we're... Okay, great. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and tell the tool what, what kind of bit we have in there. We have a engraving bit, Z-Touch. Always take your hands off the tool when you're Z-Touching, just so you don't mix it up. And start off with an engrave. You want to go like a little deeper engrave? Are you happy with that 0.02, Russ? Let's do that 0.02, because there's a lot of lines in this one. So we'll make them light lines. Cool. All right. Now, I already made a grid. Uh, off the bottom and inside of the joint on my piece. That gives me 11 by 4. That's 11 inches by 4 inches. So I can bring in that design. Toolbox engraving. Bingo. All right. Nice. I'm going to grab my bottom left anchor. I should be able to just snap it right there, and it's totally centered. That's the neat part mm -hmm. about making a bounding box, let's call it, like that 11 inch by four inch box. That you can much e much much more easily center things on labs and just make it snap in there so that all I have to do is line it up to zero, zero. Yeah. Bingo. And we are snapped. Sweet. Okay. So we're doing all this online. Yeah, let's and do it. And then Hudson we're doing inside, yeah? With the eighth inch bit? If the tool will fit. You know, while okay. you're cutting that, I'll I'll be over here. I'm just going to check in labs um, with a circle to see whether it'll fit inside there. But since we had to change the size of everything, I don't think that an eighth inch bit will fit in there anymore, honestly. Okay. I like that trick. I, yeah. Pretty much every design I work with, I uh, make a circle that is the size of my bit, and I just mm -hmm. end up dragging it around and making sure it fits into the corners mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll get started Check your on this. and everything. While you do that. Yeah, sweet. Um, sure, Goose, let's navigate back over to labs. I'll check this lettering out, and then we will see. We'll go back to Jake, because he's going to have a lot of engraving to do, and I can narrate that and tell all you new folks what's going on. Um, but to summarize, the issue that I'm unsure of is whether we can fit an eighth inch cutter inside these letters to actually pocket and clear all of this lettering out so that I can do a cool epoxy fill. That's what I want to do with this, uh, to with like some black epoxy, make the saw engraving and the lettering really pop. But I'm not sure if that's going to fit. So what I'm going to do here is just make a circle. Um, and I'm going to make that 0.125 inches diameter. And... Look at that. There we go. You can see right there, if we look at the S, then it's going to be definitely too big, which is not what I'm looking for. So I might go back after the show and pocket all this out with a 16th inch cutter, or maybe Jake would do me the favor of doing it live, uh, or we could just engrave around the outline. But since I don't want to make this text any bigger, um, that's what we're working with. So... That's where we are. I'm going to switch back over to Jake here. So let's navigate off of the labs screen. And it looks like he is peacefully engraving. Um, I love engraving. It's very zen. There are no cutting forces. Uh, if you look at Jake's screen, he's just following the lines as closely as he can. Um, it looks like he's on auto mode even, and he's just keeping up with it nice and steadily. 
Auto mode's really great for long things like this. What it does is it moves um, the spindle of the router at a predefined feed rate. You set that in that speeds tab that is grayed out on the lower left-hand side of Jake's screen. And as long as you keep up with it, um, Origin will just feed itself all the way through your project, um, following your lines, of course. This is really great for engraving. It's really great for designs with a lot of corners. It's really great for marquetry, which we're going to talk about in two weeks. I know our friend Ramon, who's a great marquetry expert um, and a big fan of Origin, uh, uses a lot of auto mode for some of the bigger marquetry and more detailed things that he does. And then you can also see now that the the pip, the little dot representing the center of the spindle was moving on uh, the basically the central axis of the crosshairs there for a while. And that's when Jake was out of auto mode. Um, so he used it for the high detail, many corners portion, and then just popped right out of it there for the long straightaways. And we'll see if he uses auto mode for this curvy section. It looks like he's not so far. It's just keeping up with him more than him keeping up with the tool. Um, so as always, to learn more about auto mode, um, check out more Shaper Sessions to learn about what is the difference between engraving and online cuts and inside cuts and pocketing and outside cuts. Uh, please check out more Shaper Sessions. We do this all the time and we want to help you be confident with the tool. Um, also, while we're sitting here in a state of Zen, just chilly watching Jake master this engraving, uh, please take a moment to fill out the poll, which I think ought to be at the bottom of your screen somewhere, which will enter you in the giveaway that we'll do after the show. And if you've got any questions like, Russ, I, I hear the words that are coming out of your mouth, but really what the heck is going on? Please explain this one more time. Um, or a question that we haven't discussed yet, just drop it in the Q&A, drop it in the chat. Um, we've got Blake handling the chat today, so he's going to answer as many of your questions as he can live, and then all the questions that he can't answer in chat, Jake and I are going to take a moment to answer at the end of the show as well. Looking really good here. I love, this is like, uh, this will put me to sleep. I'm going to watch this again tonight. Just the hiss of the vacuum, the careful engraving coming around the sides here. It's just a really beautiful thing. Let's see how it turned out. Really satisfying. <laughs> what do you think, that, Jake? That was That's pretty bomb. Super satisfying. That's how I felt when I was working on Ramon's marquetry project last week. It was so zen. Oh man. There's no cutting forces is the thing. Like when you're when you're cutting with a eight millimeter cutter or even sometimes a quarter inch cutter, it's like you're wrestling with the tool sometimes, like pushing it around. But when you're engraving, it's just Yeah. So smooth. What I was really hoping you guys would jump over and catch was the fact that I was just holding auto or had auto lock on. Yeah. And for this zigzag tooth pattern. I was just cruising in a straight line and Origin was doing every single tooth for me. That Yeah, we caught that. That is cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh yeah. So I I did the I did the check in labs. Yeah. And the eighth inch cutter definitely will not fit. So say levy. What do you say we just engrave it? Okay. Are you down for that? I'm down for that. It's gonna look good. Do a little more Zen engraving. Come on. Um, great. And for everyone interested in, well, Russ, you're going to fill this with epoxy. What does that even mean? Tell me more about that. Uh, we've done a couple sign making specific sessions already. If you look at, I think, the filming in progress sign that is behind Jake, I'm pretty sure we did a session on that one. Or if not that one specifically, then we did a session on a different see-through light box style sign. Uh, we've done some other epoxy signs that are a little simpler. The filming one was pretty tricky because we had to 
then go back and refinish what was basically the bottom of the sign, but you can also do it from the top. Um, yeah, and I think we've had some interviews with a couple sign makers as well. If not, we should really get on that. Um, so we've had interviews with furniture makers, we've had interviews with boat builders. We're about to have an interview with Ramon, who's not only a furniture maker, but also a, a, a marquetry expert. Um, we've done a lot of flooring, so many different applications that it's it's hard to talk about them all on one show. But since we're trying to welcome everyone back from the new year, I am trying deliberately <laughs> to mention them all and cover all the bases just so that everyone who's new knows the breadth of information that's out there. Cause that's why we do this is, is to help you guys out and hopefully teach you a few things. And in the case of interviews, especially uh, learn some things ourselves. And we're just about wrapping up this lettering already quick and easy. Um, you'll notice, I think Jake's using auto mode for the corners while he holds the tool still, which helps you get a good crisp corner a lot of the time. And then moving the tool himself when it's on the straights. Not bad. Super cool. Man. That's awesome. I feel like you just earned honorary uncle status, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to look so cool. You th you're thinking about doing a resin fill too, right, on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be nice. I've got some I've got some food safe resin at home. Baby oh, safe. Cool. Baby safe. So it, it won't impact his development at all. <laughs> all right, I'm going to pry this off and assemble Righty. There we go. This double stick tape is some really great stuff. Pick that up in our accessories store. Yeah. Um, we sell it because we love it. Exactly. It's the best way to hold anything down. It basically. has been tried and true by us. Bam. That is. That's a good fit right there. Gorgeous. Oh, I'll come over here. <laughs> we didn't even have to bust out the hammer today. Oh, uh, I, I was just about to reach for the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Just a couple of light taps. Yeah, little little taps. There it is. All right. Nice. Hudson. There's it. Keep an eye for your mailbox. That is cool. That was fun. Thanks, everybody. Have we'll a great see you night. next time. Signing out from Shaper Headquarters. Goodbye. Bye-bye.